Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Tech Geek webinar series. Uh, the topic for today's session is why PMP course is actively sought by project managers across the globe. And uh, we have uh, with us uh, today Mr. Nishant Shukla. But uh, I'm going to quickly um, hand over the session first to Mohit Wattle, who is the head of instructor relationships business function at Edureka. And uh, he will be uh, taking us through the next uh, couple of uh, slides and also introduce all of us to Mr. Nishant Shukla. Uh, Mohit, I'm now, now making you the presenter. All right. Thank you very much, Sri Lagna. Now, I just want a quick confirmation from everyone that I'm audible to all of you. Everybody can hear me. Could you please post it on the questions window quickly that I'm audible to everyone. So you are audible. All right. That should be great. All right. Good evening, everybody. I would first of uh, first of all like to welcome everyone to this session. Now, uh, let us first of all. I would like to you know uh, brief you about this program, the PMP preparation program that we have at Edureka. So let us have a look as in how this program works at Edureka. Now, the course is live and interactive done through online classes. Now, as I mentioned, these classes would be live and would be taken by Mr. Nishan and for all the classes that would be conducted, each and every class will be recorded and the recordings will be available to you in the learning management system which we call as a LMS, right? Now for every module there would be a set of quizzes that you'll be going through after the modules after completing the live session. We will also provide you with five full length mock tests. Now in these mock tests we are going to cover over 1000 more questions. Apart from this, you also have a 24-7 on-demand technical support. Now, what does a 24-7 on-demand technical support mean? It means that when and where you have a question, there is somebody to help you out from our support team. So you just have to get in touch with our support team and they are available 24-7 for your service to answer your questions. There is also a post-course support available, which means that even when you have ended with the course, even when you have completed with your live classes, Till the time you complete your PMP certification exam, you can always come back to the support team and get your queries resolved. Now there is a prerequisite for contact hours certificate, which is 35 contact hours certificate that you need to, you know, uh, bef that you need before giving your PMP certification exam. Edureka will al also provide you with that 35 contact hours certificate. Now you also get a lifetime access to the learning management system, which means once you enroll to the program you'll be able to go through the class recordings and the module wise quizzes, assignments, everything, the more questions for a lifetime. Now, Edureka team will also assist you in filling up the application form. Now, in case this might suit your interest, you can also reach our website, which is www.edureka.in slash PMP and grab the course details from here. Now, if this course might suit your interest, you can also reach our, you know, uh, support team there is a US toll free number available over here which is 1800259730 and for India the number is 8880862004 right the complete course details the upcoming batches details everything is available on our website right here so you can have a grab a look at it once you know if this suits your interest now taking things ahead i would like to introduce to your instructor Talking about Mr. Nishan Sukla, uh, Nishan has more than 22 years of industry experience and this experience has been across various verticals, talk about application development, telecommunications, BPO banking and training as well. He has over nine years of project and program management experience and he has trained more than 5,000 managers across the industries. Now he has over 10,000 hours of training experience. 450 plus management workshops that he has conducted and the list of the companies that he has trained for looks to be endless. He talks about GMR, talk about ABB, Wipro, Accenture, etc, etc, etc. So I would like to ask, request Mr. Nishan to just join in and take the session ahead. So thank you very much guys. This should be it from my side. Nishan, please come in.
thanks Mohit for the wonderful introduction and uh, hello everyone, good evening and uh, let's uh, get started with the, this session. So before we start, uh, I want to congratulate each one of you on taking the first step on your journey to obtain that PMP certification. And this, in this discussion we are going to uh, talk about the PMP certification, the PMI, the institute that is uh, providing you this opportunity to uh, become a, a certified project manager, uh, PM, PMI, and we are going to talk about uh, PMBOK. So the entire discussion is going to hover around the latest edition, that is fifth edition of PMBOK, and all the acronyms, term in, uh, terminologies, and definitions we are going to use, I'm going to use in this session, have been picked up from latest edition of PMBOK. The objective of this session is to make you familiar with the guide to the PMBOK and uh, we will talk about it PMBOK and PMI as we move forward. So let me move to the next slide. A quick look at what all we are going to cover in today's session. We have the introduction to PMI and PMP we will talk about the prerequisites for applying for application for the PMP and PMP examination pattern and then we will have some time uh, left and we'll be talking about the introduction of project and project management, the very basics and what are the constraints we face in the project, project versus product life cycle and what are the factors influencing project and we will also talk about the key, the crux of this framework that is project management processes and the knowledge area and we will have one small topic from the uh, you know execution and monitor control that we use normally in the monitoring and controlling that is earned value management and uh, at end of the session we are going to spend around 35 minutes at the end of that 35 minutes we will uh, open the stage for question and answer so I know you will have a lot of questions but uh, looking at the last number of audience here it may not be possible to answer each and every question here so uh, you can post your question, you can send your question and uh, I'm sure the Tech Geek teams will have the details of you and we will ensure that we are answering each and every question to you if not in the session over the emails after the session. Okay, let's get started. So first of all about the organization, about the entity which is making you PMP certified. So PMI is a not-for-profit organization. It was established in 1969 in USA. It has more than 500,000 members and uh, across the globe and the number is ever increasing. The number will keep changing and keep increasing and uh, PMI is doing a lot in uplifting the profession and advocacy for the profession. They are setting the standards and conducting the research and providing access to the wealth of information and resources. They actually have done a lot for the project management fraternity. If I go back uh, in time, you know, 20 years back when I started, 22 years back when I started my career, at that time when we talk about a manager, it used to be a professionally qualified manager. As the industry grew in India, a lot of people got engaged with IT and the economy opened up, a lot and lot of people got this opportunity to work in the private sector. Technically they are strong, extremely strong, very good and you know the India, the power that India has in terms of knowledge and the talent. But to manage a project, we require certain skills, certain specific knowledge But how we are going to handle it, how we are going to control it, how we are going to lead it and how we are going to complete it within all the given constraints that we have. And PMI identified that gap. It is not only in IT but it, this phenomena is across all the industries, be it construction, be it IT, be it manufacturing, everywhere. PMI saw that gap and they came up with this PMBOK, which is a, project manage, a guide to project management body of knowledge. So PMBOK provides you the uh, certain standards, industry standards. So it, it is made up of uh, processes and knowledge areas, and they have been uh, you know, developed by the experts around the globe. And uh, PMI also provides the professional development. So what they offered is the different kind of certification based on the industry standard and the best practices that they have. 
PMP is one of the certification that is offered by PMI. You have ACP, you have uh, PGMP, Risk Management Professional, Agile Certified uh, Practitioner and a lot of other courses. And PMP is one of the most prominent certification that PMI has. So what is this PMP certification? As I told you, PMI has this project management body of knowledge which is made up of the best practices which are uh, developed and uh, gathered by the, the professionals across the globe and after you read this after you go through that you need to take up this examination and once you clear the exam you will be called as a project management professional so this certification is globally recognized and very much in demand right now and uh, if you go to some place and you tell them you are a project manager so they may have to ask certain questions to check your knowledge whether you really know about the project management or not. But if you go and tell them that I am PMP certified, they will not ask those basic questions, they will not ask certain questions because they are already aware. You have already proven your knowledge about the project management, about uh, you know the industry best practices. So that recognition is given to you by PMP certification. And of course, it helps you in uh, advancing your career. It helps you in uh, getting better opportunities outside your organization, within your organization. I have seen in my experience several times when we look for the club, when the client is looking for a manager, for a person who can manage their project, they specifically ask that we want a manager who is project management, so PMP certified. So this makes it quite uh, useful and also the value building. Okay, so that is about this PMP certification and now we are going to start with the prerequisites. What is it that you need to apply for this PMP certification and how you can obtain that certification? You need to have a bachelor's degree like graduation or BA, BCom in any discipline or an engineering degree and if you are a bachelor you need to have 4,500 hours of project management experience accumulated in minimum three, uh, 36 months of time. So when I say 4,500 hours means they must be from non-overlapping duration. For example, if you are a project manager and you are handling three projects at the same time and you are overseeing those three projects and you have eight hours available to you in a day, you cannot say that the total sp time spent on project management activity is 24 hours in a day. No, it has to be from non-overlapping projects. So if you may handle multiple projects, but if you are handling the same projects at the same time, you will have to document that information in a specified format that from this particular time or this duration, let's say from 1st April 2014 to 30th April 2014, you worked on project A and this was the time that you spent towards the planning activity, execution activity, monitoring and control or initiating or closing or anything. You need to document that and at the same time you also need to provide reference of a person who can vouch or who can certify that because all the applications, out of all the applications, 20% of the applications are picked up for random audit and if your application is picked up for audit, PMI is going to contact those people and they may be asked to furnish certain details which will certify that yes, you worked on that project and the information you have provided is true. If you do not hold a bachelor's degree, if you have a diploma, high school diploma or some other diploma, then you need to have uh, 7,500 hours of experience gained over minimum 60 months time, that is 5 years time. And the process remains the same, it says the number of hours that will expand. And you need to undergo a training which will give you 35 contact hours. So uh, Mohit gave you an introduction about the session, he briefed about the session that we have. So that session is going to give you 35 contact hours, you can do that uh, through online learning and uh, when you are applying for the examination, you may have to scan and upload the copy of that certificate along with your application form. And one important thing, uh, people ask me all the time that, you know, I have been working for past eight years and nine years, but my designation was not manager. I was a, a lead, a tech lead or 
system analyst or any other designation no your designation does not matters what really matters is how much time and effort you have uh, spent towards project management activities and how we capture that i'm going to talk about that in uh, uh, some time you know when we reach to the process group areas so that is about the prerequisites and this is about the okay i'll wait for a few seconds yeah so the slide is visible to all of you okay so this is about the examination pattern so the day you receive an email okay you have filled up the form you submitted your credentials and details to pmi pmi did the verification of that and at end of that verification you will receive an email from pmi saying that yes your application is accepted now you go and block your examination from that date you will get one year to come to appear for the examination and this examination is a computer based examination which is conducted at prometric centers and you need to block that date in advance now a tip for you a suggestion from my side if you are planning to take that up in next three to six months time i would suggest you need to hurry up because getting seat in prometric center is not that easy they are normally blocked all the time and in the question you will get in the examination you'll get 200 multiple choice questions which are mixed randomly they'll be coming from all these knowledge areas and the process ropes and you will be having only four hours to uh, answer those 200 questions out of the 200 questions 175 questions are for the final marking and rest uh, remaining 25 questions are the pre-test questions so and you need to get score uh, the passing mark for this PMP examination is 61 percent so out of 200 questions sorry out of 175 questions you have to ensure that you are getting 106 questions right so this test pre-test questions you will not know which is the final question which is the real question and which is a pre-test question it is not it is for the PMI for their own research work uh, we cannot get into the detail of that because of the constraint of the time but what you need to you need to take all these 200 questions with the same level of seriousness you just cannot say that okay these 25 questions okay I can take some chances maybe you know uh, though that can provide me some buffer or some push, uh, some cushion. No, you will have no idea, and there is no negative mark in the examination. Uh, and this examination, this test paper, and the question paper, they have multiple versions of it, which are developed by the group of individuals and the professionals across the globe who hold this PMP credentials and who are the industry experts. And uh, this examination, the nature of the question that you are going to get is not confined to any particular industry you can get this question pertaining to any industry but you should know the right techniques you should be familiar with the processes you should be familiar with the terminologies the most important thing is to get familiar with the terminologies you might be using any kind of terminologies in your organization in your real life scenario but you have to read the PMBOK and you have to become familiar with the terminologies which are being used by PMI otherwise you will have a tough time while taking up this exam and you may not succeed in first attempt as well in case if unfortunately you are not able to uh, clear it in the first attempt you can reappear after a gap of 30 days by paying some examination fee unfortunately if you don't clear in second time you can go for third attempt and let's talk about the extreme case that someone is not able to clear in the third uh, attempt also then that person will have to start the process from the scratch but need not to worry about that in my experience I have not seen anyone who could not clear it in three attempts so all good luck to you and uh, you need not to worry about the re-attempt just focus on the first attempt and you will have to make a target to crack it in the first attempt and it is not tough it is not tough it is uh, I'll not say it is very easy also and you do not focus on memorizing the content that is here in the PMBOK the logical understanding is the most important so with that I will move to the next slide and now we will have the introduction of quick introduction to the project and project management areas and before that give me just a two second break I need to sip some water Okay. 
So what is a project? The definition says a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service or result. Anything that we do, anything that we do which is temporary in nature is a project, can be qualified to be a project. And uh, I get this question a lot of time from people that, you know, we work in operations industry, we work in the service industry, you know, it's an operational uh, environment, we don't have projects, no. Anything that you're doing that has a definite start and end is a project. It could be a small project having a duration of two days, three days, five days. It could be a long duration, one year, two year, five years, but it will be a project. And second characteristic is unique output. The output of the project has to be unique in some or other way. So when I say unique, it means unique within that organization. So if you have to develop an application, if you, let's talk about ERP application. If you have to develop an ERP application for a client, you will develop that. You will spend some six months time in developing that application and then you will deploy it there. After that, you are going to get another contract and from another customer will come. He will ask for the same similar kind of ERP application. And then you cannot say that, no, this is not a project because it is not unique. We have already done that. That new customer, the deployment that you need to do at the second customer can also be a project because he may ask for certain customizations, certain minor changes. The scope will be limited of that project. You may not have to spend six months in developing that. You may have to spend probably 10 or 15 days in doing some customization, but that also will be called as a project. And the third characteristic is progressive elaboration. So progressive elaboration is a very important uh, characteristic of a project. So when you, it's like walking in the mist. When you start walking, when you're outside that area, you see that, oh, there is a mist, you know, we don't have clarity. But as you move forward, as you move ahead, you will get better clarity. So when you start a project, for example, if you want to plan a vacation, so the moment you get this thought that maybe we should go for a vacation, you are going to think about, okay, where shall we go? You will have some high-level budget constraints. Your, your family members can say, okay, let's go to Switzerland. And then you look at your budget and say, no, we cannot go to Switzerland. You need not to do a proper, a detailed estimation at that time. Looking at the high level information that you have, you say, that, okay, let us go to some place in India for a vacation. And once you have agreed that, okay, we'll go for a vacation uh, uh, on, uh, in two months from now, then you start working on other details, okay? When we are going to do that, when we are going to go there, when we are going to come back, what will be the mode of transportation we will have? how we'll travel by train, by air, or by road. And once you agree on that, then where you're going to stay. So you can see, as you are making progress, as you are moving ahead with your project, you are getting more details and you, the scope is becoming clear to you that how we are going to travel, where we are going to stay, how much budget we have, how much money we are going to spend in our stay, how much budget we have, money we are going to stay, uh, spend in our food and other expenses. So that is your progressive elaboration which is very important and from the examination point of view, there may be certain questions uh, where you need to keep this progressive elaboration in mind. And once you have identified a project, you are set to start uh, a project, you need to start managing the project. And project management is a combination of knowledge, skills, tools and techniques. So what is the knowledge here? So knowledge about the subject, knowledge of the area in which you are going to do this project, domain knowledge and your project management knowledge and the skills, skills is your, uh, it more, it talks more about your, the software area, uh, soft skills because as a project manager, you need to spend a lot of time, uh, as per PIMBOK, you need to spend almost 80% of your time in communication, but what we are going to communicate, with whom we are going to communicate? we will be talking to stakeholders and stakeholders includes our senior management, our customer, team, vendor, anyone who is involved in the project and we need to have some skills. We need to require certain skill set to manage, to manage all the issues, to manage and to lead the team, to ensure that the project gets over in time within scope and time and cost and skills are very, very important. That's why when you go for an interview, when you look for uh, any uh, uh, opening or anywhere, 
you know, it is clearly written that, okay, we require a project manager who has a good domain knowledge, who is good in this technology, good in this work area, and he is good in negotiation. Communication should be good. Written communication or the verbal communication, that is very important. And then tools and techniques. Tools, project manager is not a one-man army. He is not the one who is loaded with all the arms and who is going to fight the war alone. No. He will have to rely, in fact, the entire project management team will have to rely on certain tools. Your MS project, I'm sure you must have heard of this tool called Microsoft Project. It is a project scheduling and tracking tool. You may use a lot of tools like this. You may have some cost modeling tool. You may have some cost tracking tool. You may have some quality planning tool and tracking tool. And you need to use certain techniques to interpret the information that is coming from all nooks and corners of this project to you. And you have to ensure you are interpreting them in the right way so that that can that information can help you in taking decisions about the project. Okay. And it also requires your generic management skills. See, PIMBOK cannot cover each and every aspect of human behavior. If you have some specific kind of team member or your stakeholders, you need to shift your gear, you need to change your gear, you need to make some changes in your own approach and strategy that how you're going to ensure that their personalities have the minimum influence or the impact on the project. And for that, you need some generic project management management skills and also professional ethics, very, very important. Okay. So where we are going to use all that information? Where we are going to use our knowledge, skills, and tools and techniques? As a project manager, we have to ensure that all these competing factors of the project, which are not limited to these three, but these three are the key uh, competing factors which are also called as constraints. So these constraints are your scope, time, and cost. And using our knowledge, skills, tools, techniques, we have to ensure that these parameters of a project, whatever has been agreed upon, remains the same and our project does not deviate from that. And easier said than done. That is why in the previous slide you have seen that we need to use some generic skills, management skills. It is very, very challenging in the current environment where uh, the change is the only constant thing in our life. It becomes very challenging, it becomes very tough for us to ensure that all these elements remain intact throughout the project. But we will have to do that. And how we are going to do that? We will have to first of all understand that the project that we are working on, it is a part of which larger picture? And where does it fits into the entire the, the, the work of the entire organization? So this slide talks about project versus product life cycle. So <clears throat> I'll give you an example. Uh, suppose an automobile manufacturer, they decide to come up with a prototype of a new vehicle and they announce it publicly that we are going to come up with a hybrid car at end of 2016. And it is going to be state of the art uh, car. And they, their R&D team at that automobile company, they start working on the prototype. They work on the prototype for let's say two years time. At end of two years, the prototype is ready. It has gone through all the tests and it has gone through all the approvals. And now the company is ready to take it to the next level that is your mass production. And they start manufacturing this car. They continue to manufacture this car for let's say five years or eight years. At end of eight years, they say, okay, we are going to discontinue this product, but we'll continue to manufacture some of the uh, spare parts to provide support to our customers. They will continue to manufacture that for let's say next five years, and then say, we are completely discontinuing, with discontinuing this product. So that is the end of your product life cycle. The product here is car, and the life cycle started when this was visualized, when the, the thought uh, uh, came, when it was initiated that, okay, we will have some car. And from the beginning of that thought process towards, uh, uh, till the end of the, uh, that manufacturing of the spare part, it was completely a product life cycle. And between that, there were multiple projects which were undertaken. It also included operations. So a product life cycle is made up of multiple project life cycle, and it may have operations life cycle, life cycle as well. And in project, in the same example, automobile, so uh, the R&D team starts working on that and make this, uh, do the feasibility study. And after feasibility study, it will go for the analysis and detailed design. After design, they will build the prototype. And after that, 
it will go for the various rounds of testing and it has to go through various approvals. So we have the different phases. So these phases will make a project life cycle. So the project here is to develop the prototype. Remember, project life cycle is a small subset or subset of a product life cycle. So the project life cycle, the focus of and the, the objective of this project is to deliver that prototype and which is divided into multiple phases and in each phases we need to carry out certain activities so the team which is working on the prototype first of all they will do the initiation and in initiate process group they will say okay who are the people who are the key people what is the objective why we are doing this initial uh, this uh, feasibility study they will have some processes which are coming from the initiate and once they have a clear cut statement of work then they will start working on the planning that how the feasibility study will be conducted and once the plan is ready the team will get into the execution whatever plan they have made they will start working on that plan and once the work is completed they are going to close it and throughout this process loop they will have one another process loop running there that is monitor and control they have to ensure that whatever plan they make it is within the scope given to them and whatever plan has been worked upon uh, has been created the execution remains within that limits you don't they don't do anything extra and when the work is being done it is as per plan so they will have to do a lot of variance check variance analysis and once it is completed it will move to the next phase the phase that is analysis so it will continue to happen like this now initiate plan execute monitor control and close these are also called as IPEC. So these are the process groups. And these process groups will define the entire project because they will have all the processes coming within them. And before we talk in detail about the processes, let us spend a few minutes uh, understanding the factors which can influence. A lot of time in my experience I have seen people coming and saying, you know, uh, I, I have authority, uh, sorry, I have responsibility but I don't have authority. And because of that, because of that mismatch, I'm not able to deliver my work on time. I'm not able to complete my work on time. I'm asking for resources, but I'm not getting that. So there are a lot of factors which can influence a project. So before you start the project, you must understand what is the culture of the organization you're working in, what kind of styles they have, and most importantly, you need to understand you were, what is the structure that you have, what is the organization structure that uh, uh, you, know, you have in the company. So we have this organization structure can be put into three broad categories that is your projectized organization, matrix organization and functional organizations and the type of organization defines as a project manager how much authority and control you have over your project and project resources, how much decision making power you have. Okay? If you are working in a projectized organization you will have the all authority in the world, the entire team will be reporting directly to you, there is no dotted line reporting. If you are working in a functional organization, then you may have any title, but the role that you are playing is of a mere project coordinator, because people are not reporting to you, they are not under you. You don't have authority over them. If you look at the arrows, you know, in the functional or type of organization, project manager is at the lowest level of authority, and functional manager have all the authorities. Matrix is a mix of your projectized and functional organization where you will have some shared responsibilities and authority. So we cannot get into the details of that. When you read PMBOK, you will have all the information available to you associated with these factors. So before you start working on a project, please ensure that you understand what kind of structure you have in the organization. And based on that, you decide how much authority you will have and use that input in doing the estimation and the planning. Okay. And uh, now we will move on to the next area that is your processes. So let me check if it is visible to all. Yes, all of you can see this. So the process, we talked about the product life cycle, then we talked about the smaller subset of that, that is project life cycle. Project life cycle is made up of phases. Phase, in each phase you will have the IPEC, that is initiate, plan, execute, monitor, control and close. And each process group will have certain processes. 
the process is the smallest fraction of that entire project life cycle. There are 47 processes in PIMBOK Guide 5th edition and the process is nothing but a predefined set of uh, instructions which and the set of activities that you need to carry out in order to complete that process. Each process will receive some information maybe from some other processes or from some other areas which will be called as input and then it will process and analyze the data, it will use certain tools and techniques and provide the output. Output of one process can be used as an input to another process. There are 47 processes and there are more than 500 input tools, techniques and outputs listed down in those processes. Now from the examination point of view, you cannot memorize them and I strongly suggest don't even try to memorize them. Logical understanding is most important. You're, you must become familiar with the logical flow of the project and if you do that, you are actually like you know uh, making a good progress towards your clearing your PMP examination. And uh, this process is and then there are knowledge areas. There are 10 knowledge areas in the 5th edition of PIMBOK guide that is your scope, time, cost, quality and so on such a long list and some of that consolidation of that is done in project integration management. Project integration management is a very important process and it is a high level process which is normally performed and carried out by the project management team. We will create the subsidiary plans, we will follow the subsidiary plans and when we talk about the overall project, we talk about the integration management. And then there are there's five process groups that we talked about. Initiate, plan, execute, monitor, control and close. All these processes are spread across these ten knowledge areas and five process groups and this is how they are mapped. For a detailed table, for a complete list of all the 47 processes and how they are spread across these process groups, I would suggest you read PIMBOK, you go through PIMBOK and you'll find this detailed information. So depending on what stage of the project you are in, you will have to carry out certain processes and this is how PMI has structured and mapped these processes to this process group. For example, if you are in your initiating process, you know you need to carry out one important process from integration management area that is develop project charter and there is one more process from the stakeholders which is not visible here that is your identify stakeholders. Once you have done these two processes then you move to the next that is your planning process group and then for each subsidiary project management area you need to work, you need to carry out these processes which will give you the integrated or master project management plan and then you need to carry out these other processes. So I hope uh, it, uh, you know, uh, you're able to understand everything. If you have some doubts or questions, please post your questions. We will take it up uh, at end of it at, uh, once we are done with the slides. So that is about how the PIMBO guide is structured and how the PMP examination is and now we are going to pick up one very interesting topic from uh, monitoring and controlling process, process group that is your earned value analysis. So how we have structured is you must have got a fair idea, we learned about what is PMI and what is PMP, what are the prerequisites for that, how to apply for that and then uh, you know, what are the factors we need to understand and what is this project management all about, what is the objective of doing the project management that is to ensure that we maintain the right balance between the competing factors of the project. These are called as constraints. Now how we are going to know that? How we would know that whether these constraints are in control or not? And for that we are going to use this technique which is called as earned value management. So earned value management is a technique to measure the performance of the project against uh, the you know uh, of the project work against what was planned for. So in a simple way in a layman's language we are just comparing our actuals with what was planned. Okay. How we are going to do that? I'm sorry let's talk about why on value is needed. So tracking the progress I mean ensuring that you are making uh, progress as per plan is very very important because if you do not do the health check 
you at end of the entire project you may feel and you will definitely have a lot of challenges because your scope your time and cost and everything will be out of control so you need to create certain checkpoints in your project and at each checkpoint you have to do the health check of your project so that you can take the corrective actions or you can take the preventive actions if you see that your project is giving some signals that it may derail or the scope or let's say the time the time that you're spending on the project is more than what is needed more than what you're planned for so it gives you enough time to take preventive or corrective actions so let us quickly talk about how it is done so we first need to understand these three key elements of on value analysis PV that is planned value that means the work that was planned till that point so till that checkpoint we are always talking about the work plan till that checkpoint and the on value on value is how much work we have completed till that checkpoint and actual cost that is AC that means how much money we have spent in actual in doing that particular work so we have a quick example to understand that so suppose you are the you are the project manager for a construction of 20 miles of sidewalk and according to the plan according to your original estimation the cost of construction will be fifteen thousand dollars per mile and it will take eight weeks to complete and you make your plan you start working on it and after two weeks time you reach to a checkpoint and you need to do, do the health check and then when you look at your actual that what you have done you realize that you have completed four miles of the sidewalk and you have spent $55,000 in completing that part of work and now we need to see how we are doing are we on track in terms of scope and time or not now before we get into the detail please remember on value is always done with respect to the dollar value so if I can also say that in eight weeks time we are going to complete work worth so many dollars so first we need to identify how much work we were supposed to complete so let me go to the next slide okay. great so first we need to check how much work we were supposed to complete so simple 15,000 by 8 uh, 20 miles that is your $300,000 so this will be your budget at completion so we can also say that in eight weeks time we were targeting to complete work worth three hundred thousand dollars and now we will calculate what was the work planned for how much work we had planned till that checkpoint in at end of two weeks time so at end of two weeks time we our plan value was seventy five thousand dollars how we arrived to that so the total duration is eight weeks we have completed work we did work for two weeks that means 20% of the time is gone and in 20% 5% of the time we were supposed to complete work worth 25% of $300,000 that is $75,000 so we get the value for our first element that is PV then we go to the next one earned value so earned value is how much work we have completed in actual and in that previous slide we saw that the work completed is worth uh, sixty thousand dollars sorry uh, let me go back to that slide one more time yes fifty five thousand dollars I'm so sorry for that the actual cost money spent is fifty five thousand dollars so we do not have this on value so we need to now calculate that how much work is completed we have completed 20 percent of work so the 20 percent of work of the total work means if the total work is worth three hundred thousand dollars twenty percent of that will be sixty thousand okay. dollars so this gives us the value for our second element that is earned value the work done so far is worth sixty thousand dollars and actual cost is given to us that is fifty five thousand dollars okay now actual cost you may get this information from any of the project management tool that you're using or your finance department can also give this information and using this now we are going to check how we are doing that 
we will check that we will calculate the variances that we have so first we are going to calculate our cost variance so the cost variance is uh, it is your on value minus actual cost so the on value the work we have done so far is worth $60,000 and the actual money that we have spent so far in this project is $55,000 and the formula is on value minus actual cost that gives you a positive value of $5,000. Any positive value with respect to cost variance is good. It means you are spending less than what you had planned for. So which is definitely a good news but a rare situation to see in the real life. I am sure all of you would agree. And we also calculate our schedule variance. Schedule variance is how much schedule difference we have from our plan with respect to work and dollar, uh, the dollar value of the work. So the formula for calculating schedule variance is on value minus plan value. So the, our on value, we already know that it is 75,000 and the plan value in two weeks time which is 25% of the total duration we were supposed supposed to complete 25% of the work that is $75,000 so this gives us a value that is 60,000 minus 75,000 uh, I'm sorry there is a typo here so please read the last two values as SV not the CV so your schedule variance here is $60,000 minus $75,000 that means a negative of $15,000 any negative value is not a good news so it tells you that you are behind schedule by work worth $15,000 okay. so okay this gives us a good information and this is gives a good perspective of you know how we are doing with respect to the project but we can calculate more specific information around here that is we'll calculate your cost performance index and schedule performance index so we have formula for cost performance indexes on value by actual cost that is your uh, and the calculated value for that is 1.09 and in the previous slide where we saw the cost variance it was a positive value and I told you positive value is a good news you are within your budget you are spending less than your budget so any value uh, greater than 1 is a good news. So your CPI is 1.09, it means you are spending less than what you had planned for. And your SPI, that is Schedule Performance Index or Indicator is 0 0.8 using this formula of Earn Value divided by Planned Value. So any value less than 1, the benchmark for CPI and SPI both is 1. Less than 1, not a good news. 1, neutral, you are on track and more than one it's definitely a good news you are ahead of schedule okay so in a realistic situation uh, sorry in a uh, very typical situation you should get one one for both SCPA and SPA and in a very hypothetical situation uh, I'm sorry I'm using this word hypothetical because in a real world we all know how challenging the work is how challenging the situation is we always get some variances we always get some uh, uh, you know some delays and some challenges so in a hypothetical situation your CPI more than one and your SPI more than one is a definitely a good news but the important point to understand if staying behind the schedule is not a good news then staying, staying ahead of schedule is also may not be a good news why because we have a lot of dependence we may have a lot of dependency with other on other project you need to first understand the project that you're carrying out is a smaller subset of which larger program and then you will realize that okay staying ahead of schedule also may not be a good news at certain time you have to ensure that you are on track always how you can do that for that you need to go through this pinbook in detail and you need to learn and understand these processes and then you need to create your own methodology remember pinbook guide is not a methodology it is a body of knowledge you need to pick and choose the processes relevant to you you need to tailor those processes and then you have to prepare your own methodology which will be best suitable for your organization and also for your project okay so let us conclude this on value analysis here so we have some more calculations here so we have done a health check at a particular point of time and now we need to see that 
what actions we need to take to ensure that we complete the project in time. So for that, we need to calculate the estimated completion. So at this rate, how much money uh, we will end up spending when the project gets over. And since we already know our CPI or cost performance index is greater than one, it means it is a good news. So the estimated completion, so we are making assumptions. In project, we will have to make a lot of assumptions. So the assumption that we are making here is that considering the factors that we have which are influencing the cost, they will remain the same. No changes will happen to them. So looking at those numbers, we will be able to complete this project at a lesser cost than we had planned for. And estimate to complete the work that is remaining. Okay. We have completed 25% of work and uh, sorry, we have completed 20% of work. Remaining work is 80% uh, to complete that 80% of work, how much money we need. So there are a whole lot of formulas. We do not have luxury of time to get into the details of that formulas. There are more than 25, 26 formulas which you need to go through. And when you read the PMBOK, see, there is, there is no alternative to PMBOK. If you want to clear the PMP examination, you will have to read PMBOK. When you read PMBOK, you will get a detailed information around this on value and you will get a list of all the formulas that you are going to use there. Okay? And uh, I don't think we have time to complete uh, to talk about uh, the remaining slides that we have. So we have uh, variance at completion. We can, using this formula, we can also calculate that at this pace, what will be the variance at end of the project? So we can do some forecasting around that. We can do make some projections uh, using the same assumption that, OK, considering there won't be any variance further or it will maintain the pace, we will have a positive variance of $24,000 at end of it. And again, negative value is not a good news, and positive value is always a good news. And that is all uh, I have with respect to the information around the uh, PMP. And uh, with that, uh, I hand it back to uh, Shilagna and we open the stage for question and answers. So I'm sorry I took uh, more than uh, the time given to me, but uh, I think that is okay with everyone. So Shilagna, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Nishant. And uh, I have already assigned you a bunch of questions. Uh, you may find them in your questions uh, window. As we speak, uh, I'm receiving more questions, but looking at the time, uh, let's see how many questions you can first address in the next five minutes, and then yeah. uh, I can uh, I can share some more questions with you later. Okay, so I received questions from Rajesh Kumar, Deepak, uh, Pubalan, 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 Kalyani, Sunil, and Devesh. So, how much time we have, Shilagna? Uh, exactly, we have six minutes. Okay, so I will try to answer as many questions as possible. Rajesh, your question is, you take up support of an IT software product. It goes forever. Is it a project? Well, you are talking about the application maintenance. So suppose your customer has uh, raised a service ticket. And uh, you know when you do the diagnosis, you realize there is a bug. And that requires a bug fix. So you will pass it on that query to your development team. And development team says, we need six days or seven days or and, uh, some uh, days to come up with a bug fix. Those that work that they need to carry out for seven days will be a project. So you are talking about application maintenance which is highly projectized operational environment. So it is a mix of project management and also the operations management. So I hope I answered your question there in a, a very quick manner. You can just uh, uh, you know, ping Shilagna through chat in case if you have some more questions. And I'll quickly move to the next question by Deepak. Are there any uh, domain-specific category under PMT certification? No. There is no domain-specific certification under PM, uh, consider categories under PMP. PMP is domain independent. No uh, specific information associated to any industry. And See, you may have heard of Agile, you may have heard of Prince2. They cater to the specific section of the industry, any particular industry. But PMP is generic. It is domain independent. I will move quickly to the next question by uh, Pubalan. 
So in my company, I'm doing the project management right from requirement gathering, estimation, scheduling, resource management, stakeholder interaction till the delivery of the project. But I'm not involved in any of the budgeting, costing and government. In my case, what is the organization structure? Uh, I'm sorry, Pulan. I do not have. I don't see the enough information, uh, you know, to answer this question correctly. Maybe you can uh, uh, get my contact details and we can connect offline uh, to understand. I need to understand certain uh, uh, some situation there, and then I'll be able to answer your question. So uh, we can probably make a note of it, and uh, we'll get back to you in offline mode. Kalyani Sirki, could you please show the slide 14? Need to know a little more on the organization structure. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think we will have time left for that. But after having having all these questions, in case something is left, I will quickly take you to slide number 14. Okay. And uh, Sunil Vogis, in how much time do we need to take the PMP exam post training? I strongly recommend you need to spend minimum 120 to 140 hours in studying. So no matter at what level of understanding of PIMBOK or the uh, project management you are, but the most important uh, thing for uh, clearing this PMP is first you need to unlearn and then learn from scratch. And for that, you have to keep minimum 120 to 140 hours. Okay. Now depending on how much time you can spend every day, you'll have to plan it out that way, whether you want to take the examination in two months time or three months time or six months time from the day you take the training. But take the examination when the momentum of study and the preparation is extremely high. Do not, do not have gaps in between. Okay. I will move to the next question. Uh, Devesh, how much money we will have to spend to PMB certification? So I'll give you just a high level thing. $555 plus the cost of training plus the cost of books that you need to have. So the cost of training, you can get in touch with the, the marketing team. You'll know about the cost there. But the PMP examination fee is $555. Okay. You can log into uh, PMI.org website and you can download the uh, PMP handbook. So this PMP handbook will answer all your questions that you may have associated with the certification. Okay, so the next question from Publan, which project management tool that you would advise in the fast moving world? I have personally, uh, I mean, worked on Microsoft Project for a long time, and I think it's a fantastic and lovely tool. You need to go for that, but using that tool is not that easy if you don't understand it. If you know the in and out of the tool, it will be it will make your life very easy. Go for a training for MS project. Okay. So what is the alternative if I don't have 4,500 or 36 months work experience? Uh, Shinivas, I am so sorry, but there is no alternative. You will have to wait till the time you gain 4,500 hours of experience and the minimum work experience is of 36 months. And the last question is, will the 35 PDUs taken from the PIMBOK third edition will still be valid for the PIMBOK 5th edition. Uh, these are, first thing is, these are not called as PDUs. The training that you undergo, that will give you 35 contact R certification. And if you did that in 3rd edition, uh, technically the certification is valid for 3 years, so you're out of that bound of 3 years, so I think you would, you should go for a uh, fresh uh, training and it is very important because uh, you know there have been a lot of changes from third edition so uh, I would suggest you do a fresh training and then prepare for the examination because there are the stakes are huge five hundred fifty five dollars is not a small amount so I would suggest you take up a few uh, training again so that was a question from Hiren so Hiren I hope uh, that uh, this gives you clarity and uh, Shilagna, I don't see more than uh, these questions. So do you have any more questions or did you receive anything afterwards? Uh, yes, Nishant, we have a bunch of questions lying, but uh, we are running out of time. Uh, so maybe I could request all the attendees to take up the questions with uh, you offline or they, they could either mail the questions to us or directly to you, whichever way. Perfect, uh, perfect. Yeah. I would, uh, yeah, so the, you can get in touch with me. My contact details are there, and you can always get in touch with the Adurega team and the Tech Geek team. They will divert the questions to me, and I will ensure that each end of your question is answered over the phone or over the email, whatever way is possible. 
And uh, uh, with that, uh, we are at top of the hour. And I hope uh, you enjoyed the session. You, it was quite fruitful, and you were able to get the basic information about the PNP certification. And I wish all of you all the best and good luck in your endeavors. And I hope you become PNP pretty soon. Thank you so much, uh, Nishant, for uh, the presentation today, for taking time out and answering some of the questions. And I'm sure uh, the attendees probably will get back to you offline with more uh, such questions. Uh, the recording of today's session will be available by tomorrow afternoon on uh, techic.com. So you can continue the discussion on our discussion forum, post your queries there. And I request uh, both Mohit and Nishant to also uh, join in uh, and uh, answer those queries by coming on to our discussion forum. If there is any okay, other... Perfect. For any other yeah, feedback... For any other query, you can, yeah. Uh, yeah, for any other query, you can log into uh, Adrika website and the contact numbers are given there. You can get in touch with the team. With the team. All right. Thank you so much once again, Nishant. Have a, have a, a great Thank evening. You. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.